Okay. Hello, party people. If anybody is here, if anybody's watching. Give me just a second. I'm trying to set up my laptop so that I can try to see the comments on my laptop instead of my phone. So give me just a minute and give people a chance to hop on. Okay. Today we're going to be doing a hummingbird tutorial from start to finish. Uh, we're going to sketch, we're going to paint, we're going to have some fun. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. I got my laptop set up so that I can see y'all's comments. Hello, Terry, Deborah, Betty. I am going to be doing a palette prep with you guys too because I get a lot of... Hold on. I'm trying to show my table but not my mess. <laughs> I'm trying to do a um, palette prep right now too. Just going to lay down my colors. This is the wet palette. A lot of you guys are going to hear this for the umpteenth hundredth time. Um, but this is what I use to store my paints in. It's got the sponge. It's full of water. It's got the little special paper it comes with. And it's got a lid to keep your um, paints fresh forever. <laughs> forever. I like to put a little paper towel on top because you're supposed to wet the paper. And then put the paints on top. But sometimes if I put too much water on the paper or it's too wet the paints will just like spread out and just be like one big nasty glob hello bonita hello shay hello kathy everybody is here well not everybody but yay somebody is watching me <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna lay down some prep work just you know give other people a chance to also join in i am weird about my paints and how i set them down I like my black to be right next to my white. I'm not using too much paint. Um, the paints that I'm using are the Liquitex uh, Basics Acrylic Fluid. I like my fluid acrylics because they are just very easy to work with, very easy to blend with. Um, they're not everybody's cup of tea because some people think they're too watery. And that's okay. You do what works for you. Art does not have to don't have to do things exactly like somebody else does because then you would not be you so I'm just gonna lay down some colors I think I added an extra colors that I didn't even put on the prep if you do not have you know a specific color and you want me to help you color match or help you blend um, just type it in the comments say hey I don't got I don't know how to make this color teal or you know yada yada whatever Oh my goodness, I don't even remember what colors I had put down for like the prep. But for the most part, this is it. I'm also going to be using the macaron shots from Wanda. Um, just like pretty blues, purples, like a teal color. I'm probably going to end up blending. And yeah, so this is how I store my paints. I'll put it off to the side here. Of course, you already know what we're going to need. We're going to need a ton of brushes nearby, so grab... All your Fred brushes, if you're new here and you don't know what a Fred brush is, it's the ugly ones that you're like, eh, I kind of don't want to use it no more. That's your Fred brush. That's the one. Uh, lots of blending brushes, any type of brush that has a tip like this. Um, you know, fluffy brushes. I don't buy, like, expensive brushes. I'm cheap. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm <laughs> just not a professional teacher, painter, etc. So I just buy the cheap brushes from Walmart. There's various brands in here. Um, Art Smith from Joann's. This is probably some of my favorites. These you can get at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, or Walmart. Um, they have the rubber handle. Anyway, looks like we've got a couple of people on here. So let's get started. What do you guys think? Hello, Jennifer, Wanda, everybody hello and welcome thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight we're gonna do a hummingbird and we're gonna start sketching it from beginning to end okay don't freak out on me you can do this i promise you i take a lot of breaks if you're new if you haven't painted with me before i will 
chat your ear off about my life, about painting, anything that you want to talk about. Um, I tend to go a little bit, you know, a little slower. Um, so I'm actually going to do the background first, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the hummingbirds have some very wispy feathers, right? And when I'm doing wispy stuff, such as fur, um, hair, anything that requires, you know, gentle brush strokes, I do like to do the background first because if you're, let's say, you know, you're, you're painting and you're like, oh my God, I did the most amazing fur strokes, yada, yada. And you're like, oh crap, I need to do my background. How are you going to do the background when you have all these gentle, beautiful, delicate strokes that you just know that's just a pain in the butt. So we're going to do our background first today, um, which is very unusual for me. I only do this if I'm doing wispy stuff like wispy hair, feathers, you know, scruff, fluff from sweaters or anything like that. So let's do it first. And I'm going to go with some like bluish hues, um, maybe some teal-ish hues. And we're just going to experiment with some colors and have some fun. Again, if you don't have my exact colors, that is okay. Anytime that you mix blue and green, you're going to get some sort of a pretty teal color. And so let's put a little bit more blue in here and a little bit of white. If you already have a really pretty like um, aqua color like this, use that. If you already have it in the bottle, that's perfect. I Because these are a little bit more expensive, I buy only like the primary colors that I'm going to need and then from there I mix. So I'm a very big paint mixer, a very big... Um, uh, you know create my own colors because I just that's just how I am and I understand that not everybody is like that and that's okay so if you have you know like the regular uh, paint bottles with a color that's already like yeah okay that looks you know pretty similar then use that it's okay to use that and to do what you gotta do so I'm gonna I'm doing this on a smaller Santorini stone from Shelly um, it's my comfort zone to paint on stuff like this, so if, you, if it's not comfortable for you, get a bigger stone. It's totally okay. You do what you got to do to make yourself believe that you can do anything in the art world. So I'm starting off, and also, before I go into that, look at the shape of your rock. The hummingbird that we are doing is going to be like this, and it's going to be, you know, kind of facing up. Um... So I did pick a little bit of an elongated shape. If you're looking at the rock and you're like, oh, this looks a little bit weird, you don't know, mess around with it. Move it around to see what direction you want to paint with. Anyway, going back to this. So I'm starting from here and I'm gonna blend the entire background together. My brush is wet, it has paint on it, and we're just gonna dab it in. I know that that sounds a little bit rough. If you do strokes like this, it's gonna be a little bit, um, you're gonna get like a little bit harsher line that's gonna be a little bit harder to blend with. So I'm just tapping in directly from the top. And I'm gonna wet this up a little bit more because I, I'm just blabbering on. And I do wanna make the center a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna wash my brush off just a little bit. Um, it still has a little bit of color in there and that's okay because this is gonna all be blended in together. I'm gonna go in with my white and start tapping in from the top. Don't overthink it, just do it. Don't, um, I think that that is a lot of the issue that I see within the art community is, oh, I don't, I want it to be perfect or I, I'm overthinking it and I get in my own head. Just don't even think about it. Just pretend like you are, like just tell yourself, like I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing and I know that I can do this and just do it just do it and I'm gonna grab a little bit of dark blue it's like a like an aquamarine blue and a little bit of a dark violet to make like a really pretty blue purple and don't worry I'm gonna pause after this to kind of explain a little bit more or to give people a chance to catch up I just I know that I need to get this blended out or else I am <laughs> gonna have to redo this and I'm trying to work quickly on my end because I do have wet paint that's gonna dry fast and it's gonna just make the blending a little bit more of a pain in the butt so there we go the paint is still wet I am going to grab a dry brush remember I told you have a lot of those nearby grab them have them 
at your ready. And I'm gonna just blend in. Using that dry brush, I'm gonna rub off the excess paint and I'm just gonna blend, blend, tap, tap, tap. I know Kathy knows about my whole tapping obsession. I like to tap my paints in because that's what you're doing. And just blend it in until you get a nice little, um, you know, until you can't really tell where one color starts and the other one stops. So let's just go ahead and do that. And if you guys cannot see, please let me know. Let me move this over a little bit. So you guys can kind of see a little bit better with the light. I know that it's hard because it's got like a reflection. And just blend that out. Blend it out until your colors look really pretty and nice with your brush that is dry. And you kind of want it to look a little bit like mystical, like misty, like uh, whimsical, like a little cloud. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna just wipe it off and kind of try to get as much of the water off so that in the future when we are blending, um, we're gonna be able to just have that dry. <laughs> I have a ton of brushes on standby for my dry brush. So I'm gonna take a little pause here and catch up on some comments. I'm gonna um, uh, let you guys catch up with your blending, get your colors going. If you guys are just joining in now, you're a little bit too late, cancel the whole thing. Just kidding. I also like to joke a lot. I'm very, um, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, that's, I have a weird sense of humor. Okay, so we see Margie says that she missed the draw. We have not drawn yet. We're doing the background first. Oh, it's okay. Jennifer's here. Dan is here. Hello, Dan. I got like all the all the good painters on my uh, my life tonight. Like, what's going on? The pressure is on. All of the people that I constantly see commenting and posting and sharing. Like, I feel like I already know you guys. I love it. I I just emptied out my pocket and I have a whole bunch of tiny little <laughs> tiny little rocks. My daughter um we went to the creek today and she loves to look for rock like her and my husband they have like this little sieve that they just like sift through and um they're like mom put this in your pocket so i have a whole bunch of like tiny little pebbles in my pockets she loves it belinda hello all right so this is kind of almost dry what i also want to do is i do want to add a little uh, pops of color pops of pink um, if it's looking a little bit too dark for you, then you can totally line it up. And um, if you're like, oh darn, my paint is completely dry, um, then that's okay. It's okay. We can work with it. Just add a little bit of white in. I got, I, my brush is dry. This is a, a brand new dry brush. The other one is still here drying. Um, I got, I just dipped it in regular white and I'm just going to use the fluffiness from the brush to kind of blend it out. And get mean with your brushes, you know? I mean, that's what they're there for. Don't, um, this is why I use cheap brushes. <laughs> You're gonna get a little bit mean with it. Um, if you feel like it's too light, you know, just blend it out. Add a little tiny bit of water to your brush and tap most of it off onto your, I, I use burp rags, if this is your first time watching me again. I use uh, old burp rags since I don't use them anymore as my paint rag, which is very convenient and I, I use it for a really, really long time, so it's not like a paper towel where I have to, you know, worry about the environment and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, if it's too dark for you, just add a little bit of white in and kind of like, you know, do a little circular scrubbing motion. Pretend like you're, you're scrubbing it into the rock. See how it lightens it up just a tiny bit. Oh yeah, kissing the water with my brush. If you don't know, also when I say kiss the water with your brush, it means do not, um, this is not kissing the water with your brush. This is completely saturating it. What I mean when I say kiss the water with your brush, it means literally just boop and that's it. Just, that's what you're gonna do. Just a little bit of boop and that's it. Just kiss, give it a little kiss and that's it. 
Um, all right. So is anybody painting along with me tonight? Are you guys just here to kind of chill, check out? Let me know so that I know what your speed is and what your momentum is so that I can keep going forward with you guys and not leave people behind. I mean, at some point, I'm probably going to end up having to leave somebody behind, but I want you guys to be as caught up as possible. Um, so send me a thumbs up in the comments if you guys are good to go. If you're painting and you're good to go, um, if you still need me to wait a little bit, send like a little like a little pumpkin emoji or a little spooky emoji. <laughs> All right, Wanda says she's painting. Deborah says she cannot paint and watch. That's valid. Jennifer's just watching. Margie's just watching or taking notes. Sorry. Bonita's gonna try. All right, Bonita. Everybody's watching. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. Um, let me. Okay, so Wanda, are you good? Let me know. Wanda's good. Awesome. All right, so now that we're here, we're going to get to the sketch part. All right, so <laughs> this is where I always get nervous because I'm like, oh, my God, what if I go in here and I'm a complete fraud? <laughs> People don't know. Okay, let me um, get something that is circular. If you do not feel comfortable drawing circles, I'm going to teach you how to do it step by step. Uh, so we're going to use a lot of odd shapes, like a, like an eyeball shape. See, like there's a, a circle, a triangle, an eyeball, an, like a lemon squeeze. So we're going to use shapes to build our hummingbird. And then from there, we will go in, paint, add details. So we're going to start with the circle. And that's how I'm going to teach you guys. So if you do not feel comfortable drawing a circle, grab something that you feel uh, is a, an appropriate size. If you, do, if you are having issues with proportions on your rock, which is, I think, one of the bigger issues that people have is they're like, oh, I don't know how to fit it inside, give yourself some space. So say, okay, this is going to be where I'm going to fill in my hummingbird, and I'm not going to leave this circle except for the wings and the beak, and that is it. So give yourself, like, center yourself. Give yourself a little guide, a little circular guide. And that's what I'm going to be working off of today is my guide. I'm going to grab the top of a wash tube and that's going to be my circle. So it's kind of towards the top here of my guide. And it's giving me enough room to leave the beak out here. So let's draw our circle. Trace it. Um, you know, you could use the bottom of a paint, but obviously that is way too big for me. So find something around your house that you feel is like, okay, if you have a circle, uh, I need to get one of those like little circle, um, stencils to, to make this easier on myself. Um, use a, a penny, quarter, anything. Let's draw our circle. From here. Let's kind of look at where um, you want the beak to go. We want it to go not directly center. So if you need to draw yourself a guide, like a like a cross here, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for here in the center of my circle. Can you guys see that? So let's say this is where my beak is gonna go. I'm gonna uh, kind of like curve this out a little bit. like that and you can go in and erase or if you don't feel comfortable erasing if you're like oh my paint is gonna come up just leave it alone and we will fill it in with some paint I don't like having all my guidelines so I'm gonna erase I'm gonna paint the section anyway so I'm not worried about the paint lifting so let's make it it kind of looks like a little bit like uh, Jack in the Box right like Jack from Jack in the Box and then from here we're just gonna go straight up for the for the little beak just a line and that's fine and from here let's turn our rock here is my little where my hummingbird is going to go I'm gonna turn my hummingbird this way so that I am looking at it like this I am looking at the way that the bird is going up from here 
Hold on, I had my whole like little spiel. Actually, I'm 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 a liar, <laughs> and I'm gonna erase the bottom, the bottom portion of the circle. So just the bottom portion because this is where we're going to come out from. From here, we're going to draw a teardrop shape, like a like a very skinny looking lemon. I'm drawing so light I can't even see my my pencil. We're not going to close it because this part is already open. So like a little lemon. If your lemon is fat, that's cool. Just, you know, he's going to be a little bit more plump. And if it's a little bit skinny, that's cool. We can paint and expand him out a little bit. Give him a little bit of weight. So here is the drawing so far. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Just say, I can draw a lemon. And just, just do it. Don't think about perfection. Don't think about... Um, Proportion wise, you can fix that in paint and I can help you with that. Here is my little body. Now let's turn our hummingbird this way or whichever way you feel more comfortable. I'm trying to figure out which way uh, a lemon slice <laughs> would go better. I'm gonna go just a little bit down from the, the little V intersection where his head meets his body and I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit just a straight line I kind of did not leave enough room for his uh, wings so I'm gonna make it a little bit skinnier and that's okay he's just gonna be on the on the Atkins diet for now so let's do the wing out and let's do a lemon shape in and you want to put it into the body okay kind of like a little hook in From here, I'm going to erase my little line that I had for the body. And see, we're almost already done with our hummingbird. <laughs> you just need to come down here, point your, your rock in the direction that your hummingbird is shooting up at, and that's going to help you bring down a tail. And the tail, all we're going to do is we're going to draw two lines, kind of a little bit up from the... Uh, point where his butt is and let's close it out for now because we are going to do this with paint and of course his little his little feetsies right here and we're done with the sketch and that's it so if you are following along once you get to this point you're like wow okay the hard part is kind of done let's continue on all right Actually, I lied, the eye, I forgot the eye. <laughs> so from here, let's go down here and start kind of meeting yourself in the middle. The, the eye is going to be um, in line with his beak. And since you already have your line here for the beak, kind of look at where the head is. You can make your little cross. And this is where your eye is going to be. Do one eye curve up and one eye curve down. Can you see that? All right. Okay. So let's get started on the fun parts, which is obviously painting it in. And we are going to do a like blue, green, um, a little bit of pink. And what I do want to do is I want to go in with my purple. It is a very dark purple. It is, um, I can't even say that, Dio dioxazine purple. And I am going to go here, turn my rock so that I am looking at it directly as to where I'm painting. Let's fill in the bottom portion. This is a very dark purple. If you don't have dark purple like this, that's okay. You can use black. You can totally 100% use black on this. And I'm going to fill in this bottom portion of his face. A 
like this. Hello, Lori. Hello, Jen. I forgot what it's like to do a live. I haven't done one in so long. I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? What do I say? How is everybody tonight? You already know. I'm going to ask, what did y'all eat for dinner? Tell me in the comments, what did you guys eat for dinner? I am currently on a very strict diet. <laughs> So I'm living vicariously through you guys. We're going to wait for this to dry up. Give people a chance to catch up if you need to so that it's not so fast. I'm not just uh, speeding through it. I'm going to erase these little guys while I'm waiting. Um, another question that I get often is what do you use to um, sketch I just use a regular pencil honestly whatever I find lying around some of these pencils have been severely chewed by my dog because if you guys know Bruno he is very into everything I just use a regular mechanical pencil I mean it's it's not, not nothing too crazy I mean here's another one that's also been chewed ta-da all right, here come the food comments. Yes, goulash, chili and saltines, yum. Lasagna and Caesar salad, grilled burger, sweet corn and watermelon soup, air fryer fries, big talibut, mm, tuna sandwiches and watermelon, chicken pot pie and cottage cheese. That is different, Bambi. <laughs> Pineapples, brie, and a, mm, I just, oh, Tropical Smoothie has this new mango um, flatbread that has, I think, I want to say it has brie in it. And it is so good. It's like a mango uh, sauce that they put on it. Anyway, hamburger, corn on the cob, yum, Brussels sprouts. I actually love Brussels sprouts, and my husband absolutely despises them. And every time he, I, like, cook them, he's like, uh, here's your share of them. You can have my share. Crab stew. That sounds good. We had chicken teriyaki um, with rice noodles. It was pretty good, if I do say so myself. My husband grilled the chicken, and I just did, you know, the veggies and stuff. So now that this is here, let's move on, and I'm going to go in with a dark blue. It does not have to be navy blue. I just, this is the blue that I am using. Also, another name that I cannot say. Like, who comes up with these <laughs> paint names? <laughs> and I'm going to paint the top of this little, this little baby. Remember, it's curving into the wing. So do a little swoop up. Come back down. And it's okay if you get in the purple. Get, get up in that purple. This is all gonna be covered with detail feathers anyway. We're just laying down the foundation base color for what we are trying to do. That eye is like way too big, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. All right. Let's also just paint out that, um, I'm gonna grab uh, one of the eyeliner brushes and I'm gonna paint out the beak and it's just gonna go straight up. I don't wanna do a curved beak because sometimes when the hummingbirds have the curved beaks, it freaks me out a little bit. Like, I, it freaks me out to paint them. You can curve the end a little bit, but that's about it. This is gonna be straight out. This is what we have so far. Let's fill in the base for the wings. So if you have your uh, brownish, tannish colors, um, if you have like burnt sienna and you want to use like a, like a yellow, white, like this is buttermilk, I think. Yeah, obviously it says buttermilk, Diana. I'm gonna put some of that down 
and I already have burnt sienna on my palette so I'm going to move my rock over so that you guys can see the paints that I'm going to be mixing. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and I'm going to take a little bit of that, you know, like yellow. If you want to just put white in there, just put white. I mean, it shouldn't make that big of a difference. See? If you don't have burnt sienna, you can mix a little bit of red, um, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of brown. Just a smidge of white. But we're going for like a caramel color here. We're going to do the first layer. So go up to about, look at where your line is for your wing. Go up to about halfway. And come meet me where the, arm, the little armpit should be. And just fill that in. Not too much over here because this is going to be like a white color. Actually, I think I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here. Like that. And again, remember, I am not a professional. I am not a professional teacher. I just really love what I do. And I love to paint. And I get asked about how I paint very often. So I am trying to share. <laughs> I'm trying to share with you guys. So let's get some some of that dark purple, or if you want to do black, that's totally cool too. Let's come down here to about, not directly where the butt is, move a little bit up, like right there. And let's just bring that up to where the bottom of the wing should be. Like that. Also going to grab some purple. And I'm going to lay down the base for my tail. If you're just tuning in and you're like, what the heck is going on? You're going to find out. That is the best part about painting is not knowing where you're going to go or how it's going to end up. Just fill it in. Remember, this does not have to be perfect. You are going to be covering this with feathers. None of this is going to be visible. Well, it's going to be like a little bit visible. <laughs> not completely, though. All right. Give it a little bit of a second for anybody to catch up. Remember, send me some thumbs up if you are painting and you need, you're ready to move forward. Aw, oh, thanks, Dan. Hello, Jamie. Let me see who else. Who else is sneaking in here? Linda. Kim Arnold. Megan. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we'll just hang out a little bit and wait for that. Man, look at me. I was like, I'm going to add some pink over here and some like pops of yellow, and then I just didn't. That's okay. We'll add it towards the end. We're going to get crazy with it. I don't know what I'm, where this is going, <laughs> like with most of my lives. Uh, we're going to learn together. Sherry is here. Hello, Sherry. We are just waiting a little bit. For not only for the paint to dry, but also for people to catch up. Which is great. It gives me a chance to drink some water. I am going to apologize in advance if you hear my kids screaming or crying or if my dogs get crazy and start barking. Um, this is a very busy household. I have three kids, six and under. And I have two dogs, one who is only four months old and she is very um very playful and my kids are upstairs with their father they are not unattended before anybody anybody gets crazy my husband is a champ he's upstairs right now just hanging out with them all right wanda says she's ready 
Jamie's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Jamie. You are 43. You are not old. You're not old until you are, like, in your 100s. That's when you are considered old. <laughs> All right. So let's go on with this. I am going to grab some... I'm going to make, like, a gray baby blue. Does that make sense? If you don't have a baby blue, just grab some blue and add some white. I'm going to grab some baby blue and a smidge, just a little lick of, like, just dip it in there real quick, and um, of black. And I'm going to mix it in because I do want the grayish tone, but I want it to be baby blue. If you're not happy with it, add a little bit more black. Just mix it in. And that's the color that I'm going to choose for the body. It doesn't stand out too much from the background that we painted, but that's okay. If you're looking at your hummingbird, like, what is this possessed-looking thing? Just have some faith. Okay. So that's the body. See where it's little pieces, little pieces that'll add up to one, one pretty picture. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. I'm gonna go back in with that dark purple that we have been doing. I should have just done it from the beginning, but it's gonna go on the rest of the wing. And this is, if you guys, I don't know if you guys, anybody watched it, but last night I was live on Wanda's YouTube, um, the, foiling, the, ah, the Foiling Rock Lady and Friends, and um, my I painted that woof that I posted today with the roses, half woof, half roses, and this is how it started to look out at first. It was a little bit like, whoa, what is that? But hopefully we will get there. And that is it for the base paint. I mean, I'm the little feet I'm going to do at the very end. But now we can get to the fun part, which is um, grabbing our fine liners, grabbing anything that you use to detail. If you have like a detailing brush, that's super cool as well. I'm going to use my eyeliner brushes because that's just what I paint with. And I'm going to do most of my detail work with this, which is pretty much the rest of the hummingbird um i will say that the best thing that you can do for yourself as an artist is know which ones of your brushes work for what and what i mean by that is i like to do use certain brushes to do fur to do um grass why because i know that they're messed up fred brushes and that's just what I call my brushes um, that are ugly and nasty. They're the best brushes to me. See, this one was completely flat. Um, but because I use it so much to blend and I, I, you know, pound down on it, it's like this. It's fluffy. It's like scraggly. But it is the best for like fur. And this one also used to look like, um, you know, sleek and straight. And now it looks like this you guys can see it but it's very scraggly the bristles are completely just everywhere and it makes the best brush for fur this one as well another example used to be flat and now it is used for fur and grass and you know stuff like that so I'm gonna be using brushes like this if you do not have a brush like this now is the perfect time <laughs> to make one just you know pick your designated brush that's going to be nasty and just you know just get mad at it get pretend like it's that bully from high school or something i don't know um i, I my brushes go through a beating yes jennifer all all paintings go through an ugly stage every single one every single one all right so let's get started on the um First, I want to work on the the bottom of the head. Let's go and grab some of that, uh, some of these macaron shots. 
I'm gonna use some of this. If you don't have like a baby pink or a magenta, actually, I think I'm gonna actually end up using the neons. Let's put our pink palette down so you can see what I am doing. Just gonna put a little bit of pink. Um, one of the tips that I gave yesterday was if you do not have paints that you're like, oh, I need this to be a little bit brighter, um, it's not a bright enough red, yada yada, these are gonna be your best friends. This is not, and I promise this is not gonna be a promotional, but this is just the products that I use and this is what I paint with. Um, the neons are just incredible to brighten up your paints. Like the red, I put, the red and the red are the best. These are, this is my number one go-to combo right here. Not thaw crimson and gouache red, neon gouache red from Wanda. Perfect. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the pink and a little bit of this pink and let's come over here and mix it up. And yes, this is gouache and this is acrylic. These are two totally separate mediums. Can you mix them? Absolutely. Why not? Who says that you can't? I see a lot of posts of like, I got this product from, you know, wherever you got it from and I don't know how to use it. The only way that you're going to know is just try it. Just try it out. You never know what you're, what you're going to end up liking to paint with. You never know what you're going to end up um, falling in love with. Like, I never would have thought that I'd be a, a, a rock painter, you know? I never would have thought that I would be super into watercolors. Like, I've never painted with watercolors before. I actually started painting with oil pastels on canvas and then I moved to acrylic and now here I am just acrylic wash watercolor you throw it at me <laughs> I will do it okay so I'm gonna turn this hummingbird around because this is the way that I want to um, direct my brush strokes they're going to be going into your fur so I'm going to when you do a brush stroke it's you know the fat part first and then you whip it up and so the the end of the brush stroke is going to be skinnier than the bottom portion. Does that make sense? And that's why I always have pink on my hands. Alright, so I got my pink. It's mixed up. It's a really pretty, like, baby pink. Um, I was going to use the macarons, but I ended up using the neons and acrylic, and that's okay. It's okay to change your plan, as I talk to myself. <laughs> Alright, so this is where the black is right if you want to draw yourself a little guide so that you don't get into the beak you can go ahead and do that let's do this for show and tell there it is and I'm going to start doing very tiny brush strokes very tiny if you are having trouble doing details like this that is okay Take a break, take as much time as you need. It does not need to be perfect. Because this is gonna be layer after layer of little tiny feathers. See, there's a wrinkle because my paint is too chunky. That's okay. I have pink on my brush. I'm gonna actually grab some of the purple neon. If you do not have the neons, I know not everybody has the same products I have, that is okay. You can use purple with white, use a light purple if you have one, that's totally okay. Hold on, I got a clog. Let me get my little dotting tool, if I can find one. Oh my god, it's stuck. Of course it's stuck. And I'm just going to use a, this is how I unclog my washes and just kind of stab it a little bit go in there with a little dotting tool that's how I unclog all of my paints actually and ta-da comes out smooth like butter so there's my purple that I'm going to be using I still have wet pink paint on my brush I am not going to be removing that rinsing it I'm just going to go straight straight into the purple here and I'm going to start to move on to purple over here you can't really see it right now because it's wet but that's okay because we're gonna layer over this again 
also with some white highlights. And then now that I'm starting to get closer to the body, the body is going to be white. I'm gonna, I still have purple and pink on my brush. And grab a little bit of white onto it. And let's start to make some brighter toned, little tiny brush strokes. And if you're asking yourself, well, like I don't have the the hand coordination or my hand shakes, yada yada. What you can also do is Shelly's tip of holding your hand up, stabilize it, use your pinky as an anchor, pinky anchored, roll over, and you can have a better direct control. And that is a tip from Shelly that I use the most is anchoring my pinky and trying to go steady my hand, steady my hand onto the rock. If you don't have want to steady it onto the rock, steady it onto your table and do that. If you don't have eyeliner detailing brushes, again, it is okay. Find, you know, the skinniest uh, brush that you can. If, if you want them to be fat little feathers, you can do that too. If you don't have a skinny brush, um, do what I do. Sometimes these are, these come, the, obviously they don't all come the same, so I'll set apart a little bit of the brush and I'll just chop this part off. I'll just grab some scissors and just chop it off. And I think I just completely spread my brush apart. I know. It's salvageable. And twist it. Twist it to make it fine again. Um, again, if you are... I know all of the people that have been through my other lives probably have heard this a thousand times, but the best way to get a fine tip on your brush is dip it into your water or dip it into your paint and before you go into your painting put it down on your your towel or whatever if you like let's say we're going to do some paint and if you go in it's going to obviously be a big blob but if you go in and you kind of see there's a big dot on the end of my brush i'm just going to come down and twirl it use my fingers to twirl it to get a fine tip to get rid of the ball so that we create finer lines. Not so pro tip from a average person here. <laughs> Let's go into, um, well actually let me wait a little bit and see if, let me know when you guys are ready to move on. Don't overthink it. Remember, if you get too much if your feathers become too close together like let's say um, you start to do this and they start you start to lose the background the black it is okay what you're gonna do is just grab some of your dark color back in and you can just add add your black in in little little tiny sections it's okay there's ways to fix mistakes don't overthink it I'm gonna say that a thousand times, y'all are gonna be sick of me. All right, so let's go into our, um, do you remember the aqua that we used over here for the background that we already mixed in? I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to it just to make it a little bit lighter. And guess what? The paint that I mixed before is still wet because I'm using a wet palette, ta-da. The best investment I've ever made as a painter. All right, Bonita's ready, Wanda's ready. Let's go, let's roll. All right, so let's actually grab your pencil and let's direct this down from your eye down to the back of where the neck fat should be so that you give yourself a little bit of space to say, okay, I'm gonna transition from this color to this color. So here is the purple that we were doing and I'm gonna go over, just slightly over the purple with some of that um, teal color that we just used. Up to here. And if you wanna make it even lighter, we can add a little bit more white to it.
and you can highlight that section. And what I mean by highlight is you don't have to put the little white dotting over all of it. You just put it on a couple, which is what I can do over here with the pink as well. Just add more white to my pink and kind of highlight a couple of them. Oh, there's too much water on my brush. Highlight a couple of them. Nothing too crazy. You're just adding layers to your fur. And then, if you remember the uh, like tan, the caramel color that we used over here, I'm gonna pick some of that up with my brush again. And I'm gonna come over here to the bottom of the beak. And let's kind of separate the dark from the background. I'm just doing a little bit of a line, nothing too crazy. This top portion of his head is going to be a little bit more smooth, not as rugged as the bottom. So I am gonna wanna blend the line out as much as I can so that I don't have just a harsh tan line there. And the way that I'm doing that is I am putting some water onto my brush, my clean brush that I had already rinsed out, it's just water. Kiss the water with your brush and while the paint is wet, try to blend it out as much as you can. You can be as gentle with it as you can because sometimes if you're too rough with it, it will lift the paint off and then you're back to square one just, um, you know, trying to blend the line out. And it's a, like a equal uh, mix water with acrylic. Does that make sense? If you are picking up your paint and you're like, oh man, like here, now I have this line. That's okay, go back in with your paint. Your paint is still wet, rinse your brush off, tap it off, and use the moisture. Don't, make sure that your brush isn't saturated. Use the moisture from your brush and kind of just, I'm kidding, I'm a liar. Just tap it out, tap it out, you know. Use the, the pool of paint to manipulate the um, the blending. Oh man, I didn't get my neon. You're gonna need a light green. I don't think I put that on the, I didn't put that on the color selection. So I'm gonna use, oops, I'm gonna use some of the neon shimmer shot. But if you don't have neon shimmer shot, that is okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab some green. Um, this green is called Hooker's Green. Hooker's Green Hue. And we're gonna grab some yellow. This green that I'm using, I mean this yellow that I'm using is just primary yellow. We're gonna make like a green yellow. Again, if you have this color already in a bar in a bottle, that's okay, just use that. And we're just gonna put in some white with our green and our yellow to make a bright, pretty hue. It's very much not a neon like Wanda's, which is why I love her products, but, um, you know, it's it'll do. You wanna add some green to that too, that's cool. If you want it more yellow looking, add more yellow. It is your painting. You can make it whatever hue, color you would like. Let's grab our feathery friend here again. I have a lot of paint on my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, I'm not gonna completely rub it off. I'm just gonna tap so that it's, it's not in excess. I'm not just splotching on the color. I am lightly adding in the color that I want in a very discreet manner. So I'm just gonna do some very light strokes. The, my hand is very light right now, and what I mean by that is I am not, I am not pressing down on the rock. I am very lightly touching the rock, kind of like it's a baby that you don't want to wake up. You just want to lightly get your color into the rock. 
but you don't want heavy strokes because you want it to look a little bit wispy, a little bit, um, I'm trying to lower this phone holder. You want it to look a little wispy, um, to blend out. I am rinsing my brush off. I'm gonna wipe off the paint that I have on there because we're going to blend it into a different color. I'm a liar, I should have just kept the, the paint on my brush. Um, I'm gonna go in with this teal again that we blended for the background. I, I really like this blue. This is, uh, I wanna say it's cerulean, let me see. Oh, it's actually it's actually called turquoise blue. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that green to make it just a little bit more, I don't know, just a pretty color. At that point, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just, <laughs> I like that color, so that's the color we're going with. And we're going to start to do the same thing. Just go in. Don't overthink it. Remember, if you do, if you're, if you go in and you're like, up, oh, yep this is just one solid color it is okay what you're gonna do is grab your brush and I'm gonna grab just a smidge of black it's barely on the brush it's right on the tip tap the excess off and just do little light strokes back in so this is where we are so far Let me turn my tablet back on and give everybody a chance to catch up. I do like this top green and I kind of want to connect it to the bottom of the painting. So before you get rid of the paint color that you just made, let's do a couple feathers down here going into this body. Just a little bit. Short, quick, you know, like, like a little lick. I have to rotate my legs because I sit um, like half Indian style and one leg it gets too tired. So uh, give me a chance to stretch. And you guys just let me know when you are ready to move on. If you guys are watching the replay later on and you're trying to paint this, um, just remember that you can always pause, rewind, fast forward, stop whenever you want to. Um, I, I didn't know if I was going to keep the live up afterwards because I didn't know how much of a disaster it would be. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I might just leave it up so you guys can go ahead and rewatch it. Good night, Miss Kathy. All right. Ready, ready, ready. Bonita, how you doing? I also, um, I'm gonna take a second to also say I heavily considered doing a different type of life for this tonight. Um, there's this thing on Facebook called Rooms and it's like a it's kind of like a Skype party where you can um it, you know it shows me the different box with your face or if you don't want to show your face the rock and i was going to do that and kind of limit it to maybe like five or six people like an RSVP type of thing uh where i can see your rock i can see what you're doing i can help you fix it on the spot as you paint along with me um, if you guys think that that's something that you would be interested in, then please let me know because I would love to do something like that. You know, it, it's almost like having a free private art class by a not professional. <laughs> um, but it, it would help me help you because I would be able to see your rock. I would do the exact same thing that I'm doing now, but instead of saying, okay, I'm going to pause and wait for you guys to catch up, I can actually see what you're doing and say, hey... You know, um, 
can you fix this? Or, or, you know, if you're like, I don't know how to get this right, I can help you because I can see your rock. Um, so if that's something that you guys are interested in, please let me know if I sound a little bit crazy. I would love to do something like that. Um, you know, because sometimes when we do the lives, we, we have people that can't watch or... Oh my God, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just went in hot and heavy with that. Um, there's people that can't watch or there's people that, you know, hop in. And I, I really want to do it so that I can help you guys paint in the moment. Um, so let me know. Let me know if that's something that you guys would want to do. Anyway, going back to this. So what we're going to do here with the white is we are going to use one of our ugly brushes. I'm going to personally use this flush, uh, fluffy one. I can't talk. Um, and I'm just going to go into my white. So you can see what I'm doing. I am going to... I'm not going to dip the entire brush in. And what I mean when I say dip the entire brush is I'm not going to go in... Let me get a brush. I'm not going to use this live. I'm not going to go in and just be like, yep, here I am. No. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kiss the paint with my brush see how it has a dollop of paint on the tip that is not what I want because that's not what I'm trying that's not the effect that I'm trying to go for I'm trying to do light feathery so I'm going to tap off the excess and see how those little bristles popped right back up that's what we're going to do and this is going to be a little bit tricky for those who are not good with detailing, and that is okay. We're going to anchor our hand down, anchor our pinky down. I have the stability to hold, to control the brush. And very lightly from the top, do not do a side swipe. Do not press your, your brush down at an angle. You're going to do it directly from the top. Don't go in hot and heavy and just splatter it. And what I mean by just splatter it is don't go in and just be like, yep, this is it. Because that's not the effect we're going for. You're going to want to go in from the top and kind of scratch it. Like you're scratching, you're giving that texture, that feathery texture. And it's very light, very, you see how my hand is moving a little bit um, quickly? It's a, pretend like you are painting on clouds, you are painting on air. Feel yourself, <laughs> I sound so corny right now. Feel yourself with the paint. <laughs> um, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down here and look at the angle of your brush too. See, my my uh, bristles are kind of shaped and bent a little bit this way. I'm gonna turn the brush to where it directly, the bristles are gonna be down here and the sharp, the sharp scraggly part is what I'm gonna be getting the effect on. So we're gonna just kind of do quick little, very lightly. You're trying not to wake up the paint. You're trying not to wake up your rock. You're being the quiet, respectful neighbor that's not pounding down on their down store neighbor's, uh, you know, roof. We're quiet, we're dainty, we're gliding across this hummingbird. And this is also gonna save you some time so that you're not sitting here having to paint a whole bunch of tiny little brush strokes. And just like that, we just textured the bottom of our bird. Happy little strokes, yes. Terry's still here. Bonita's still here. Bonita says she's in. She is in for that one-on-one -on -one. and I would never ever be like you have to be on Skype and you I have to see your face to bear no I don't I don't care I do I look a hot mess right now I am sunburnt I, my makeup is melting off I am not going to show my face so I do not expect yours I am just looking at your paintings helping you along and that's what it's going to be it's going to be fun it's going to be light a little bit more personal because I can help you directly fix it I did bring it up to Shelly today, and she was like, yeah, go ahead and do it. And then at the end, I was like, oh, I don't know if I, if I should. I should just include everybody so that we have the playback available. Because that's another thing is that on rooms, the playback is not available. So it's like a one and done, and you're, you're out. 
Okay, so I got a little bit of that green that we used up here. Remember this, this specific green that we mixed here? I'm going to add a little smidge of white just so that it bend, blends a little bit better with the body. And let's grab that and kind of very lightly, it's almost like you can't even see the strokes. You just want to add color. You don't want to... Um, you don't want to overcompensate the the white part of it. Hummingbirds have a lot of really gorgeous, gorgeous colors. If that technique is not going to work out for you, what you can also do is just grab like a smaller brush that you're going to use. And let's grab a little bit of baby blue. And uh, another tip, <laughs> I, know, I know these are so repetitive, repetitive. If you do not have... Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, grab your paint. What I do is I smudge it. Sm ah, I cannot talk. Somebody slap me, please. <laughs> I grab my paint and I drag it out. Why? Because if I'm going to mix paint, I can't just go and be like, uh, yeah, let me grab some pink and then boop, there's, there's blue in there. No, what you got to do is swipe it out from the side so that way if you want to mix, you could be like, okay, I'm going to grab it from this side. And I'm not going to get blue in my pink. You're not directly affecting the color that you're using. You're just grabbing it from the side and you're mixing. Anyway, that's not the color we're going to use. But what I was going to say is, if you if that effect with the scarfy brush is not working for you, uh, what you can do is you can water down some blue. And that's where I was getting with that is grab a little bit of water on your brush. Smudge it out so that you're watering your paint down. It's kind of like a watercolor effect. And we're just gonna kind of lightly go over it. So the paint is not as opaque and you're just adding a hue of color onto your white. You can still see your brush strokes underneath. You're just adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. And that's what you can also do if you don't wanna go back and have to like, if you're like, oh, the color that I'm putting on top is gonna mess up the white underneath. That's okay, just do a little watercolor effect with your acrylic paint and just give it a little bit of color. You can do the same over here on this side because right here, I'm gonna kind of add a little bit of blue, a little bit of uh, yellow. So it's all the same colors that we have been mixing and we have been doing and we are going to um, reuse those colors. So now I'm going back in with the same color that we used here and here, this little caramel mocha. I'm gonna water it down with my brush and I'm just gonna add some of that color in here on top. You can even just dot it in and let the water just settle if you wanna do that. Um, I also want to use, let's mix up a little bit of this mocha caramel color. I don't even have a name for it. And a little bit of the light pink that we used. Kinda of make it a little bit of a orangey color but also with a pink hue. I have paint on my brush. I'm gonna kiss my water with it so that it's watered down. And let's give that pink hue up, up to about here. I think I like that effect more than um, the watercolor acrylic effect more than the having to go over my already white texture with the scruffy brush so we might do that see even me as I'm doing this I'm like oh let me change this up the gray baby blue color here we go again we're going back to visit the color that we already used I'm gonna add a little bit of the neon purple if you don't have your neon purple that is okay use whatever purple you got so that it's more of a gray purple blue and that's what we're gonna water down and apply down here to the bottom. We did lose a little bit of the texture there, but because it's so watered down, I can just tap my brush off, get whatever water is on there, and lift up the paint so that the hue is still sort of there, but you can still see the texture on the bottom. And if you wanna go back in, add more color, that's okay. If you wanna take some away, that's okay too. This is what we got so far. Let me know when you guys are ready to move on. We 
we got Harmony here. We got Luz here. Everybody's just checking in. Hello, hello. Are you guys ready for um, spooky season? Are you guys ready for fall? Because I have been, you know, scrolling through Pinterest trying to get inspiration photos. And all I see on there is Christmas. And I'm like, why? Why is my Pinterest trying to tell me to go to Christmas and skip over my absolute favorite time of the year, which is fall? Fall and Halloween and just the, you know, the cozy sweaters and pumpkin scents everywhere. And I love the fall. I love it. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys are ready for it. Has anybody started painting any, like, spooky rocks? Wanda says she's ready. Wanda, are you ready for the fall or are you ready to move on? Because there's, you can be ready for one or the other or both. <laughs> yes, Lou says she's ready for cooler weather. Um, honestly, I don't even want to say anything because I know that some states are just sweltering hot right now. But it's actually, I don't even feel like we got a, a summer. Like we don't get a summer here in Colorado. It's like in the high 80s tonight or today and it was really nice really nice but that will not be me next year when I'm when I'm at a different state we're moving in a month and I also want to apologize I do not like talking about my move because it stresses me out and gives I, I I'm diagnosed with anxiety so I um, I get really anxious thinking about all the stuff that we got to do in order to move if you guys don't know my husband's in the military so we live in Colorado right now, um, but we're moving to a new duty station, and I, it just stresses me out. It, it instantly spikes my anxiety thinking about moving <laughs> to a whole other state, leaving this home, the life that I've built here. You know, it sucks. So if you ever ask me about my move and I kind of brush it off, that is why. I'm not trying to be rude. I just probably having a panic attack. Yeah, fall is the best season. I really, really love it. Wanda says she's concentrating, and that is perfect. I love it. I love that you're painting along with me. Thank you so much for being here, you guys, and, and just, you know, seeing me do what I do. Aw, thanks, guys. I know, I'm all, like, depressing now. Like, I have anxiety. <laughs> it's okay. I think everybody has a little bit of anxiety. Some just hide it better than others. I just, I can't. It stresses me out. But it's okay. It's almost done and over with. And come October, I'll be on here again. I'm doing some lives with y'all. Going back into my regular schedule. All right, so let me grab um, a, I'm not going to get a detailing brush, but I am going to get a brush that is smaller and a little bit, um, like a little bit of a, I don't know how to explain this shape, like a pointy but roundish shape. And the reason I say that is because the effect that we're trying to go for, I feel like this one would actually be kind of perfect. It's a little bit fatter. But it is short, it's not a long brush. And what I mean when I say long brush is like one of uh, like one of these. See the difference in size? I just want something little, but a little bit fat, but pointy, not flat head. A flat head is like, like this is a flat head, right? Cause it's not like round all the way around. This one. I'm gonna dip it into the water kind of try to like calm it down with my hands because it's a little bit a little bit of a fret brush <laughs> and I'm gonna grab some of that green that I was using and here what we're gonna do is we're gonna balance between the teal that we teal turquoise color that we used and some of the green and we're just gonna start off with the green first and then slowly blend into that and we're gonna do this little part of the body 
So turn your rock towards whatever way works best for you in regards to doing feathers and stuff like that. And let's, I don't like this brush. Just kidding, it's canceled. <laughs> I'm gonna end up using this brush instead. See how it's a little bit more refined? It's not as scraggly. So let's do that. Let's start doing in our little um, feathers here. Not all the way to the end because remember we're gonna blend it out. Just little uh, taps. You're just tapping in the paint. I'm not gonna rinse my brush off. I still have green on. Oh my God, Bruno. I still have green on my brush, and I'm going to just um, kind of tap it into the teal with the green. And let's highlight out here. I'm not going to rinse my brush off once again. And I'm going to dip it into this blue that I had, this like turquoise blue. And maybe, maybe just a smidge of white. Just kind of lining that up. And go over here to the edge. And I am going to stick a couple of the feathers out. Not too much. You don't want to get too crazy. He doesn't want to look like a little ostrich with fluffy feathers. Just a little bit. It's okay to go outside of your line. So this is where we are. I do want to darken this up a little bit. Why? Um, I'm going to explain how the, the wing is going to cover this portion of the body right here. So this has to be darker. This is where you start to pay attention to your light, to your shading. Grabbing some of that dark purple again and just going to add it into that one tiny little corner underneath the wing. Jennifer is going to bed. Good night, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Lou says she missed a lot, but that's okay. Lou, we're going to kick you off of the live and you can come back. Just kidding. <laughs> we're not going to kick you off. It's okay. I know people have lives and are busy, and this is a super last minute warning that I gave everybody. Um, so we're pretty we're working pretty good with the body what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to work on the eyes and the beak so with this I'm going to grab my fine liner brush and I just dipped it into water because I want to get that fine uh, tip again because it got a little bit a little bit crazy over there and I'm gonna dip it into my white paint and I'm gonna connect this. And I'm just gonna outline this bottom portion. And let's bring it up to the beak. If you feel more comfortable using like a fine liner pen, that's cool too. You might just have a chunkier bottom line and that's okay. See how I did not go all the way up to the top of the beak here, like right here, um, where this color breaks. That's because right here, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna put my white in. And bring it up. I'm gonna stop right about halfway there. I have not rinsed my brush off, I still have white, but I just lightly dipped it into the baby blue. Oh, see, I went too fat with that line. And that is okay. I'm blending that back into the white. Okay. Oh, I forgot to finish the top of the head. That would be helpful, Diana. I'm only gonna go about halfway up to where the head is. 
And if you are at a point right now where you're like, oh my God, F this, like I can't do this, I can't keep up, it's okay. It's okay because you can always just stop, give yourself a rest, give yourself a break, and come back to it when you're ready. That's the best part. So my brush was rinsed, it is clean. I'm gonna dip it into the black. And you see my pencil mark here? We're gonna just cancel that out. I'm gonna draw not so much a thin line, it's gonna be kind of a little bit thick. Going into here. Remember where our eye was? Cause I don't. <laughs> I lost the eye somewhere in here and that's okay. I'm just gonna end up filling it in. And replace that pencil sketch. Remember, don't go over your white line where you created the entrance to the beak. Good night, Pamela. Good night, Jen. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Let me know when you guys get here to this point, if you're still painting along. And if you decide to say screw it and you just want to watch for now and come back to your painting later, that is okay too. I am totally flexible. I am here for you guys. I don't have a bedtime. I'm an adult, so I can be up as long as I want doing this with you guys. <laughs> Not to say that everybody... Oh my god, that sounded so rude. Not to say that everybody that's going to bed has a bedtime. I know that you guys are all in different time zones. It's barely 8 o'clock for me here, so I am like... I, I'm fired up right now. <laughs> I usually go to bed at like 10, 30, 11. Which I know is the time for some of you right now. God, that sounded so rude, huh? You're probably like, oh, Diana, you're so kind of like rude. Did not mean that as a jab. I had to like reel myself back in. Okay. So now I am here. I'm, this is gonna. This is a very long tutorial. I think that's why I hesitated doing it for so long because I was like, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? But I really wanted to try to. To teach this and it's a lot of like mental how do I explain this in a way that everybody can understand and paint along with me and do it I got white on my brush on my fine liner brush I'm gonna roll out a little bit of it not too much though and we're gonna go down here where your eye is start a little bit out mark your place where the eye begins and ends Let's curve this down here so that you know where your eye is and the people looking at your art know where your eye is. I'm going to add a little bit of a dot here so that we know where the, the black line begins and ends, but we're not overlining the top of the eye either because I don't want, I don't want it to look too cartoonish, you know what I mean? This is the part of the live where I start to get nasally because I've been talking for like an hour and a half and so I apologize for that as well. I got a little bit of um, white on my brush again and I'm gonna put my rock closer so you can see. I'm gonna just kind of eyeball a little dot here and a little dot here. So you have some contrast to your eyeball. Mm, I have my neon green here. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. Remember, this is the neon green that we previously mixed. I just wanted a little bit brighter. I'm going to add yellow and I'm going to add white. And 
and I'm going to tap it in about halfway to where the caramel is and I'm just gonna lightly put my brush down like this and tap it in so far so good I have my brown I'm shaking it up a little bit um, this is burnt umber just the I just need it for that one little section so you don't even have to use a lot of paint I'm gonna grab some of it on my brush and use the same technique let's go up above where the, the dark purple is and kind of leave a little bit of space there and that's it that's all you needed the dark brown for so if you want to use black that's cool too How's everybody doing? Is everybody keeping up? Let me know. The eye looks a little bit creepy to me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just a tiny, tiny smidge of baby blue. I don't even have a lot. And I'm just going to create another second little dot down here. You can barely even see it. You don't even have to do that part if you don't want to. take a break I'm not frozen I'm just waiting for everybody to catch up and that is not a rush Terry says she's gonna have to go back and do some adjustments that is girl that is okay I'm just glad you're here While I wait for you guys to catch up, I'm going to paint the edges of my rock black, which is just, I don't know why I recently started doing that um, a couple months ago, and I just can't have my rock not have a black edge. I, I feel like out of place when it's not painted. It's like a little border, you know? It's like this... The Santorini's that Shelly sells are just like this perfect little canvas and then it's like a picture and then you gotta put a frame on your picture, you know? Which I'm slightly in a panic mode because I am like, you know, obviously moving in like three, three or four weeks. I don't even know what today is. But soon we are moving and all I can think about is Oh my god, I might have to order more centuries before we leave because I'm not going to be able to, um, I'm going to run out before we leave. And that's making me nervous because I'm used to having like bins, bins of them. You know, I always stock up on the blemish sales when she has them and I have a limited number now. So, Shelly, I might need to order some more. My last little delivery before we move. Or am I just, you know, have them delivered to the new house before we even get there? Oh, yeah, that makes a big difference. All right, are you guys night owls? Is anybody here, like, on a different, like, on the earlier time zone um, to the what never eat slimy worms to the west is anybody a west coaster i'm in colorado right now um so it's barely eight o'clock for me and i'm just like let me go get a cup of coffee or something bonita girl i am in here to not like in my painting but that is okay we're gonna not like it together we'll get there <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab some, uh, let's do, we're gonna grab some baby blue. I'm gonna use some of my neon purple. If you don't have your neon purple, just use the purple you got. I wanna make like a, what is this color? Like periwinkle, purple and blue is like periwinkle. 
needs more blue. Belinda's in Missouri. Oh, that would have been where we were going, actually. That was uh, that was one of the duty stations that was a possibility for my husband to be in was Missouri, Fort Leonard Wood. But we are not. Nine in Iowa. You're an hour, what is it, ahead of me? Bonita's on my same time. Ooh, Betty lives in Oregon. I've always wanted to visit Oregon. It's, I, well, obviously all I see is what's on TikTok. So I see like these beautiful waterfalls and all of this like forest and greenery. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to go visit Oregon someday. Oh my God, I just touched my rock and it's like, hello, it's still wet. All right. I'm going to turn it around because it's time to paint in these little babies right here. We're going to use the same uh, technique that we did up here and just use, a, you know, I have my paint. Ooh, I really wanted to lighten that up a lot more. So I have my paint on my brush. All I did was dip it in white. So I still have the color, but it's going to leave a little bit of white with every brush stroke. So I dipped it into the periwinkle, and then I'm going to lightly dip the tip into the white. Like that, nothing too crazy. Let that dry a little bit. Terry's in Georgia. Oh, it's so interesting to see where everybody's from. Ruth says it's 9 in Indiana. Ooh, Ruth needs to go to bed at 5 a.m. Uh-uh, I cannot do that. <laughs> oh, my God. I am not a morning person at all, which is what I'm going to struggle with when my kids go to school um, here next month because, oh, my God, I am not a morning person at all. Bonita's in Canada. Okay, okay. 10.05. Ooh, Terry needs to go to bed too. Girl, that's a little bit... That's pushing it for me. I'm like, I'm half one, one eye awake. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. All right, you said it's 7 o'clock. Washington. There's so many people, so many rock painters that live in Washington. It's insane. Jennifer says it's seven. Jan is in Minnesota. Wow, you guys are like everywhere. That's awesome. Isn't that crazy how you guys are in a completely different state and we're all together right now? Like, I, I think I love that about social media. I hate social media because, you know, obviously it's social media, but I love the connection that it brings to the right people. Um, you know, like the rock painting community, I just, I adore it. I love, love connecting with you guys. Jenny is in Texas. Okay. I'm from Texas. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> oh my God. I do not miss that heat. I don't miss the heat and the dryness. Every time I go back home to visit, which is very often actually, I just die. Like, I completely die in the heat. And my mom, last year my husband was deployed, so I went back home to Texas for, like, um, I think I was only there for six or seven months. But I, I, I basically, like, went to live with my mom because she was like, you're going to be there by yourself. Like, I don't want you to be alone with the kids. And I was like, great, I'm coming over. <laughs> so we went to go live with my parents, which was insane, but super, I'm very grateful you know that I have parents like that and oh my god it was my first summer back in I lived there for 26 years and you know then we lived in Hawaii where the highest temp is like 80 87 89 you know on a hot day and then we lived here in Colorado where it's you know and so I went back home last year and my dad was like you're from here how are you so 
because I was dying. Okay, the summer, it was like 103, and I was just like, Dad, please, please turn on the AC cooler. And he's like, this is as cool as it'll go. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you don't understand. I am boiling to death right now. Like, I am not used to this heat anymore. Anyway. One oh seven today. That makes me want to throw up. <laughs> so like, oh, I hate the heat now. I'm such a baby about it. And then my skin gets all dry and oh, I. It's home, but it's not home anymore. If that makes sense. I'm after not living in Texas anymore. I'm like, I don't ever want to come back here. <laughs> Goodbye <laughs> to the heat. All right. So. Ugh, Wanda. And then Wanda doesn't have, like, a working AC right now. Girl, I, I'm sending you so much love because you guys are in the heat, in the... Oof, I cannot. I cannot believe that. See, Betty's on my same, uh, like, heat wave right now. 89, that's that's a good day. It was, like, 87 here today, and I'm, I'm like... It was a little, a little spicy outside. <laughs> So I got this brush, right? And it's kind of like the one that I was just using, which I don't even know where I left it. It's right here. It's right next to me, Diana. It's kind of round, but it's a little bit fatter, a little bit thicker. And I'm going to grab some purple. Oh, I see my husband just tuned in. Hello, honey, from upstairs. So this is going to be that periwinkle that we just did. But let's add a little bit of this pink, which I think I used... Um medium magenta and we're gonna also use that's it I don't know I don't know what kind of color I'm making right now let's experiment gonna mix in some pink with that periwinkle yeah that's a pretty color a little bit of white just smash it all together to make kind of like a little pretty lilac I should have just started with that if you have lilac take that out <laughs> okay Hello, everybody. Oh, I see a lot of people hopping on. Terry says it was 110. Margie says to buy a block of ice and put it in front of the fan. That's smart. Hello, Miss Aqua Glass. Uh, 68. Oh my God, Ruth, where do you live? Wow, that is crazy. That is crazy. 68 degrees. I See, I complain about the heat, and then when winter comes, I'm like, ah, I'm dying because it's too cold. <laughs> All right, so I got the um, this lilac color that we just made. I got the fat, kind of fat, kind of uh, roundish brush. I have paint all over my hands. Uh, roundish brush. I'm going to turn the hummingbird towards myself and see how the wing kind of just the... What am I look? What's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of a brain dead here. Uh, we're going to paint them, you know, in the direction that the wing is going. So they're not all going to be straight down. They're not all going to be straight this way. We're going to move with the wing. Does that make sense? So from there, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to point the uh, bird in the direction that I'm going. So let's start at the top. Press down a little bit lightly and just swish it out leave a little bit of space in between and just swish it out a little bit of space swish it out and that's what we're going to be doing just go with the flow as you're getting closer to the body of the hummingbird you're going to want to um make your your feathers a little bit smaller and this is just the first layer of feathers okay so don't don't get discouraged you see how the bottom of mine are a little bit fatter. That's because that's where we want it to, um, we, we want that to be our guide as to where our feathers are gonna stop. So there's the first set. Now what I'm gonna do, it's drying. You guys are still getting your swishes in. You're still painting along. Here is my periwinkle. I'm gonna go in with this like uh, caramel color that we mixed earlier and just add that in there. We don't know what color it's gonna make, but that's okay. You guys, uh, do you guys watch TikToks? <laughs> I don't know if you guys do, but I don't know if you guys have ever seen that lady that's like, everybody's so creative. <laughs> 
she like does these uh videos making fun of those people that do like those ridiculous facebook videos where they're like i'm gonna cook like raw ramen and ground beef you know like just dumb cooking videos that you know people are just wasting food on and she does these voiceovers and she's like everybody's so creative oh yeah you know anyway she's hilarious and that's what i just reminded myself of so i'm gonna turn it now the opposite way because i want the fat portion of the feather to be down here and we're gonna swoop up so when you're when you're doing your feather you're gonna swoop up so that it creates a like a thinner line going up so let's do here and if you want to roll your brush too that's okay see we're kind of almost even completely covering the the dark purple but that's okay because we needed a base and with the feathers you want to make them wispy and um, don't think about it too much like if you are like oh it's too too thick or too um too straight you know what i mean like the edge is not perfect don't worry about it it's a feather feathers tend to separate get crazy with it kind of brush the color out a little bit blend it out a little bit his little wings will come together i promise While that is, it's actually already dry, I'm gonna grab the same brush that I was using, and here's the dark purple that we're using. Dip your brush into some water. See, I got that nice dot of water onto my brush. It's a little bit too much. Um, and I'm gonna swish out the purple. I'm gonna water it down. And I'm gonna come put it over here on this side of my palette and grab a little bit of black. It's a very watered down purple black. And very lightly, I'm just gonna bring that color back in, in between the feathers. It doesn't have to be directly in between. You're just creating a little bit of a, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like a division. So it's not just a big streak of pink and it's not just a big streak of purple. I'm gonna create a little bit of shading up here, which is just using the watered down purple and black. And just bring it in. It's not too much, it's not too much of a difference. You're just trying to blend it out so that you don't have uh, just straight color. So you give it a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension. Contrast, yes, thank you. That's why I married you and Wanda. There you go, contrast. Ta-da! All right. It's coming along. It's coming along. You know what I did forget to put? It was a little white line up here. So I'm just going to do that really quick. Just going from here. Down here. And I guess another one over here too. So you're not like completely outlining it. It's not looking like a sticker, but you're just putting the lines in the correct place where the light is supposed to like bounce off of it. Rebecca is here. Betty, thank you so much. And that's the end of the life. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, here we are going to start working on the tail. And work on the tail. You know, for some reason, I just really, this eye is really bothering me, man. It's like too, too something, like too fake, too, maybe if I make the dots a little bit smaller, because it's a very big white dot for such a tiny little eye. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. All right. Are you guys good? Let me get some water. I only did 3,000 steps today, guys. 3,119. I need to get get my butt on the treadmill right now. Wanda says she's ready. 
Terry, how you doing? Bonita, you still hanging in there? You guys good? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a something. I had this idea for like the back to be like, not like a flower, but kind of like abstract, like silhouettes of flowers. I don't know if I can pull that off though, because I need like a visual and I don't have a visual for that. Okay, everybody's good. Oh, Rebecca has to work out in a chair. Girl, I will work out in a chair with you. That means, I don't know. I don't even know how to work out in a chair. I'm gonna get Bruno and bench press him. <laughs> Just lifting my dog. Okay, I have the caramel color once again. And guess what? It is still wet because I'm using a wet palette again. I don't get sponsorship for promoting wet palettes. It's just the best investment you'll use as a painter. You're going to start from here and let's draw a little line down here. And we're gonna stop like right there. Why? Why are we stopping there, Diana? You might ask yourself. I'm gonna grab that fat brush that I just used on the, these wings and I am going to grab some of this periwinkle that we mixed already. See, using all the same colors that we already mixed. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white to it to make it just a little smidge lighter. And let's, oh, hold on, I gotta adjust myself here. Let's do one, two, three, four, five. Five tail feathers. I don't know how many feathers. I don't know if this is anatomically correct. I am not a, a bird enthusiast that knows this. So please forgive me if I'm not doing it right. But one, one feather. I just want one fat stroke there. And then let's grab a little bit more paint. Let's do two. Let's do three, four, and five, a big fat five. Like that. I'm gonna fatten those up a little bit. How am I gonna do that? I'm just gonna press harder down on my paintbrush. I'm going to completely press it down flat. We've been tiptoeing around our rock this entire time and now we're going to go in aggressively and just fatten it up. If you have a fatter brush, that's cool too. Let's see, one like, uh, no, not that one. One like this would work too. If you were, well, this might be a little bit too fat, but uh, Callie Got off work late. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I hate, I hate well, I can't even say I hate those days because I have I don't work. But I um when I did it work, <laughs> that sucked tremendously getting off late. I'm gonna grab the purple that I have, the the um dio dioxazine. <laughs> dioxazine purple and go directly i'm not mixing no colors in it the paint is still a little tiny bit wet i'm gonna go right below that and just paint bring it in and just bring it up to the tip top here like that while the purple is still wet Diana, you're going too fast. I know, I know, I know, but I have to do it before the paint dries. I'm going to um, grab some of that periwinkle and very slightly bring it in. And why am I doing it like this while the paint is wet? So that it picks up the periwinkle and the wet purple underneath and it just gives it a nice little gradient. My nails are bomb, thank you. 
they are um it's from the mermaid set uh it's like a gel polish i don't even know the name of it how many brushes do i have <laughs> i don't i don't even know the answer to that honestly i i have two large tins full of it I don't even know. I, I couldn't even tell you. I can't count. I cannot count how many brushes I have because I have like two of... So I have these little spinners, right? That I got like a... I think this is from like Ross or Target. And I have one and then I have two um, full. And then I have one upstairs as well. And some of my brushes are just completely chewed on. I have I have a lot. Don't tell my husband that. Honey, if you're watching this, I don't have enough brushes. I need more. I need more. I need to go to Joanne's. <laughs> what are my favorite brushes? Uh, well, honestly, I don't I don't have like a preference. I have so many different brands and they're all cheap. Like I just use cheap brushes. It's just I don't I don't know why I am this way. I don't know why I am the way I am. Some of my favorites are like I don't know, I've used this so much that the name has wiped off. It's like a, look, here's a Bruno. Here is a prime example of my dog. <laughs> he, this is why I need more, oh, Crafter's Choice, there we go. Crafter's Choice, they come in different colors and they have like a rubber handle and they're, they're very easy to work with. Um, I do like this brand, Artsmith from Joann's, but the only bad thing about these is that they get frayed very easily. So that's, most of my ugly brushes are from Joann's. Like this brand is, um, I think it's top notch. And they get ugly really fast, which works great because I, I love ugly brushes. I welcome ugly brushes. But like the pretty ones that stay like this, um, they don't stay like this for very long, which is why I have so many. Oh, Terry, yes. Honestly, yeah. Uh, staying, getting to stay home with my kids has been... I used to resent it at first when I became a stay-at-home mom because um, I was so used to working. You know, I had worked for years, and I had a really good job that I absolutely loved. I was very good at it. Um, I was a supervisor at, a, like, a, a bank. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, it's a credit union, but since they have virtual tellers, I was um, working at the virtual ops center, which was running the you know, closing out the, the virtual machines at the end of the day. Anyway, it's, it's a lot to get into, but that's what I used to work with. And um, I was in banking pretty much before before I became a stay-at-home mom. And, you know, after talking to my mom and my Nina and my family, and I'm like, oh, I miss work. Like, I wish I could go back to work. Like, I, you know, once the kids are older and they're like, my Nina's like, well, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side because I wish that I had seen my kids grow up. And going back now, you know, uh, my husband's like, do you want to go back to work? Like, you can definitely go back. And I'm like, oh, my God, but what if I'm going to miss my youngest baby, like, growing up? And it's just, it breaks my heart. So the grass is always greener on the other side. Yes, I do miss working, but I do enjoy fully watching my kids grow up. Like, I, I love it. I love that I have been there for everything, you know? Anyway, off my soapbox. Is everybody caught up? Is everybody good? Yes. Bankers Unite. It was very good. I have my associates in accounting, business, and economics. And an associate also in teaching. Um, because that's what I wanted to get my bachelor's in. I'm... I'm about a year away from finishing my bachelor's in education so that I can become a teacher because uh, I don't I don't exactly know why. <laughs> I guess I, my my original goal was because I'm, I was homeschooling my son, but we're going to try out public school for first grade. My oldest is going into first grade, so wish me luck with my anxiety. I'm letting go of that. <laughs> and um, yeah, continuing to hopefully become a teacher like my mom. Margie says she missed the tail because she had to take the dog out. That's okay. All we did was um, we got the periwinkle blue that we've been using, and we did five little brush strokes, and uh, we got purple over it. 
and then we use the periwinkle to drag it down into the purple on the right side of the tail so that it gives it a little bit of a division. That's it. I tried to pick like the easiest hummingbird um, photo that I could find that had like the less detail. So I really hope that this is not as scary if you guys want to try it. Um, there's so many different hummingbird pictures out there. And so I was trying to find one that was like, uh, this is something that I hope everybody can kind of do or that I can talk you guys through. Uh, anyway, now that you guys know my whole life story, why do I always do this? Every life, man, I get all, let me tell you guys about my life. All right, I got a little bit of a big brush. Um, it's not too crazy. You can use a detailing one if you want. I'm just going to do the little feet. I don't want to get too detailed on the feet. I'm just going to do little curvy waves. You don't even have to make it look like feet. It's just two little, two little black blobs that look like little claws going in. And yeah, let us work on some fun stuff now. That the core of the hummingbird is done. That's over with. Let's add some accents, some highlights. Actually, you know what? I do want to fix this little part of the wing. I was not going to detail it too much, but it's bugging me. I'm going to grab some of that purple and black watered down mixture that I used and um, kind of create a little bit of a curve in between each little feather. You don't have to do it in between each feather. Just give it a little bit of, like my husband said, contrast. Just a little bit more detail. Okay. Anyway. So usually what I will do is I will say if you guys do not have watercolors, it is okay. I know not everybody has them, but if you're trying to try them out, they are very affordable for the post up. Um, they're only like, I think it's like 10 bucks. And for the first time ever, also, I'm just going to throw this out there. Wanda is offering dot cards, which I don't know if you guys know what dot cards are. They're like little samples of the watercolors if you've never tried them and you want to try them. Um, and they're only like, I think they're five bucks. I'm not, I cannot remember. I'm so sorry, Wanda. Um, she, she'll probably correct me if she's still on. And uh, yeah, she's offering dot cards for the first time. So I would jump on that because that's a, super affordable for you guys to try them out. Um, and they do, they last a very, very long time. I'm going to put my little initials here while I wait for you guys to catch up because that's how I sign out my rocks. Put my little, oh my god, my little DG. High Chrome series only five bucks. I got it right. Yes. Oh my god, we can totally use the high chrome on these. Let me just find it first. Ta-da! We can one hundred percent use the high chrome. So anyway, like I was saying, these are the dot. These this is a, a just the regular set that she sells, but she sells like the tiny little dots that last you a, a thousand years, and um, yeah, sample those out. Ooh, which whips did you get? I just ordered some too. I ordered the I got the the buy three get one free, and I got the Stardust. <laughs> I got three packs of these guys because I'm just disgusting and greedy and I was like I need it all because just look at just yes I know I did this on live last night don't judge me I absolutely love love this whip I am obsessed with it I got three packs of it because it is just look at it look at it just look at it <laughs> it's gorgeous I love it I want to bathe in it that's what I just did it's beautiful love it um and if you don't have any of her chunkier ones, you can also try those. This is just the one that I have here. I have too, too many, but not enough. Does that make sense? I, I feel like if you guys have tried her products, then you know what that means. I have way too many of her products, but not enough. I need them all. I need them all and everything that she will come out with. <laughs> oh, and I have a discount code, which I totally forgot. I don't make a commission off of it. I just genuinely use her products on all of my stuff. 
I absolutely love and adore them. I adore her. I adore her small business. I adore Shelly and everything that she does for the Kinex Rocks community. This is chocolate icing, by the way. I do not get paid commission. I do this because I genuinely love her products, both of their products. I adore them as people and who they are and their values and who they, like what they want to bring to this world and what they want to bring to this uh this thing that brings me so much joy so anyway my discount code is gibby rocks 20 <laughs> if you guys want to save some money g-i-b-b-y-r-o-x 20 i've posted it before on my posts um you sparkling oh yeah i actually once asked Wanda, i was like wanda can you put this on your skin and she was just like uh well you can it's safe but i don't i wouldn't and i was like well she said it's safe. <laughs> so let me just smother myself in it. Oh, I love it. Anyway, now that I'm off my soapbox <laughs> and I have chocolate icing everywhere and I'm full of glitter, let's get to the fun part. Usually what I say is if you don't have watercolors, this is where you stop. You can add your acrylic glitters, whatever it is that you want to use to shimmer it up. Um but I am not like that. I definitely have watercolors. I definitely want to use them. That's the funnest part for me is adding all of the shimmer and the sparkle at the end of the paintings. It is, it's what brings me joy. I'm gonna use various ones. If you don't have all of these, that's okay. You use what you got. Um, let me see. Let's use some of the high chrome. I'm gonna use some of the, <laughs> And this is also what makes it so hard when um, when people ask me, like, well, what watercolors did you use on this? I'm like, girl, let me, do you have an hour? Because I use them all. I use them all. Okay. I'm going to use the Bohemian. And, yes, I have some extras in there from other sets. And then I'm going to see, like, the, I have Sherbert Kisses mixed in with the Boardwalk. I'm going to use some of the Boardwalk. Um... Oh, somebody's like blaring their motorcycle outside. I am going to use some of the glittery uh, orange peach from the Easter set. Hold on, where's my pink from that set? Hmm. Why is it not on here? Where is my pink? <laughs> oh my god, am I missing a watercolor? The one color that I wanted and it's not on here? Where's my pink? Am I, is it like right in front of me? I don't even know. I don't know. I'm going to use the original OG because she had two Easter sets that came out. And one was uh, full of glitter and one was just regular. And I got the OG ones. Um, so I'm going to use that. These are from the Easter set. So let's start with that. Um... Oh my god, Terry, did you? I'm sorry, that was I totally did not direct that at you or anybody. I was just like, I don't know. I don't I I genuinely don't know how to explain that I use so many on like I just use the stuff from every set. I throw throw up watercolors on these. I got like a little bit of a fluffy brush. And I do have a water dropper. This is what I use to activate my watercolors. And I'm gonna, this one is gonna take a little bit, just a little bit longer than the other ones to activate because it's got glitter in it, um, which is totally okay. It's worth the wait. I'm gonna activate some of my high chromes. Let's do some of the purple, blue, maybe some green. I got this, I think at the Dollar Tree, I don't know. Some of the Crystal Labyrinth, oh yes. God, look at this beauty. This is like one of my most used. And then let's use some of the Boardwalk Chameleons. I'm going to definitely use this color. I always say that and then I, I don't end up using all of them, but I like to have them activated just in case. Some of the purple from the Sherbet Kisses. Um, and what else? What else? What glitter should I do on the back? as if this is not enough glitter. I think I'm gonna use the, um, 
Oh my god, I'm so undecided. Why am I this way? This is the part where you can make it your own. You can make it fun. You can use whatever products you have. Um, just have fun with it. Maybe some of this light blue. That's from Sherbet Kisses 2. And I might use... Oh yeah, this baby. This like baby blue glitter that she's got. Either that one or this lavender glitter. Either one works, honestly. If you have either of those, they're just, they're gorgeous. But I think I'm going to use this one. Oh my god. And I am going to use, because I did, I, I actually asked Wanda, I don't know, I don't know if I'm like overstepping on this, but I asked Wanda if she would make me a custom uh, watercolor, and she did. So in case you guys see me using it, it's not from somebody else she made this for me but i ordered the pigment for her and um she very graciously agreed and this is just definitely one of my most used so you guys don't see this in the shop because it's 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 mine and only mine <laughs> um so if you have like the white from the honeybee set you can use that too still smells amazing all right. Oh my God, I would so use a whip, but they are all upstairs and I am way too lazy to go <laughs> upstairs right now. I keep them on my desk. I have painting areas like, I have my desk upstairs, I have my table down here, my kitchen table is a mess. It's just, I'm just a mess. My life is a mess. Bruno is outside barking. See this one already dried, so I'm gonna actually put a little bit more water in. And why am I doing that? Because I want to add some color splotches to the background. I want to make it, I don't know. I just, we're going to experiment. This, this is the part where I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of go with it and see if I like it. I'm going to add some of the Easter. I don't want to add too, too much though, in case I don't like the color combo, but blue and orange are pretty complimentary, so... Just a little bit of color splotch in the background. I'm gonna wipe it off my, my brush. This is the funnest part for me is creating with the watercolors. Like yeah, I like the painting and stuff, but adding the shimmer and all that. You guys have seen my paintings. You know that I I always say, no, Diana, you're not gonna put enough glitter. You're not gonna put too much glitter. Like don't overdo it. And then what do I do? I overdo it. <laughs> like last night, last night on the, li on the live, man, I was like, one day I don't, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put too much glitter and then in the end I was like wait I still gotta put this and I still gotta put this color and we're just gonna kind of tap it watercolors are very very um I think a lot of people get stressed out with them because they're like I don't know how to use them and I'm like just let the water talk to you just let it do its thing <laughs> just blend it in if you start to see it kind of um you see how right here it is, so this is also a watercolor tutorial. Um, if you start to see it a little bit separating, like it's not quite the like smooth blend that you want, wait for it to dry a little bit and then grab your dry brush and blend it in together. Um, see like this is still, this is still very, very wet. So I'm going to wait until it's a little bit more dry so that I can show you that technique. Um, go Gators. Oh my God, that's my husband. <laughs> My husband's from Florida. Oh, I need some water. Wow, you guys are still hanging in there. It's almost 9 o'clock. Thank you guys so much for staying and watching. Wanda is right. There's no such thing as too much glitter. I can't. I can't live without my glitter. All right, so I got my dry brush. I think. Is this dry? Yeah. It's a little bit wet. It's not completely like soaked, like sloppy, saturated. Um, it's starting to dry. So I'm gonna dr get my dry brush and I'm gonna start to tap it in so that it doesn't look so coagulated. And it's a nice smooth blend. So if you guys, uh, I do have a lot of questions. I'm like, I don't know how to use my watercolors. This is the, the section of the video that you wanna be watching. Um, because watercolors are fun. They're fun and they, they add a ton of just shimmer and prettiness to your your paintings. I think that that really is like what started to, 
I don't know, I guess give me like a little bit of extra confidence in my art was being able to to experiment with it and have fun with it. Let's just put that in here. So you kind of like blend it together and you don't have that that harsh chunkiness of it like separating like that. And you see how you straight on it's like okay and then you shift it a little bit and it's like whoa like insane right and this is actually pink it's not even blue but because her Easter set was so like uh, it's like a color shift like the the orange itself shifts from like orange to pink and then the pink shifts from pink to blue it's just so pretty I can't I can't stand it and then what I'm gonna do is this blue did I activate this I think I did this blue that I have I'm gonna put some of that oh yeah look at that sizzle look at that it's so pretty we need Lori in here to <laughs> drop some links all right I'm gonna just kind of outline the hummingbird with the glitter and it's still very wet this is my favorite part of arting. Wanda brought like the Wanda brought the joy and Shelly brought the canvas. I never knew that I would love painting on rocks as much as I do. And I am so grateful to have both of these ladies in my life. All right. So it's a harsh line, right? You can kind of see it if I shift it. You can definitely see where the blue starts. Let's start to blend that out with our dry brush. Blend it up, just tap, tap, tap from the top. Blend it out. Blend it into that background. You can choose whatever you want to do. Whatever colors you wanna choose, whatever colors you have. I know that not everybody is a watercolor hoarder like me. Use your glitter, use your imagination. And now that the background is kind of done, I'm gonna start to highlight the actual bird. And that's really, I think, what's gonna bring it to life. I always tell, tell Wonder, like my, my art is nothing without your product. And that is true because just it just really Sometimes I'll be like, oh, this painting's not that good. And then I'll add watercolor and it's like, okay. I take that back. It's kind of okay. I'm just going to highlight there. I'm going to add a little bit of this white highlight because it is a white shimmer. I'm just going to put a little bit of dots here and there. Make it fun. Make it your own. But don't overdo it on the bird. On the actual subject itself, the background, go crazy with your glitter. But once you get to, like, the actual subject, you want to only highlight the parts of your work where you want to draw the eye. So, like, I'm going to highlight this little area right here. I'm going to highlight the outside of the wings to give it kind of, like, a little bit of a flutter. And maybe a little bit of the backside, but not nothing too too vivid because you don't you don't want it to like completely how do I explain this you don't want it to completely change where the light is coming from I always talk about where where is your light coming from in your painting which direction is your hummingbird facing it's facing that way that means your light is coming this way so you want to highlight the top of your bird here's the highlight of the top of the bird here's the highlight of the top of the bird if my hummingbird was facing the other way, I would obviously add my highlights coming in this way. Look at where the light is going in your painting. Look at where the light is hitting your subject. I always get comments on my lighting. And that is why, because you got to pay attention to stuff like that. So if my light is coming in this way, what part of the tail is going to be affected? Obviously not this part, because it's being hidden by the fat. So it's going to be this light part over down here where the light is touching 
Simba. <laughs> Everything that the light touches is yours. All right, let's use some of this blue from the Sherbet Kisses because it's, I think, what would go the most with our tail. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a couple of lines. Right here, what color am I going to use here? So yeah, I activated all these watercolors, and then I'm like, oh, but which one am I actually going to use? I think I'm going to actually use some of this uh, high chrome purple, because the wings are a little, got that purple hue. Look at this. I don't even know if you can see that. Um, which way is the light hitting your wing? Can, any, can anybody raise their hand and tell me which way <laughs> the light is hitting the wing? It's going to hit the um, the tips. I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. I honestly don't know. I'm just going to highlight the tips. I'm going to take the watercolor off my brush. I'm not going to wet it. And I'm going to use the what's already in the wing to kind of just blend it out so it's not just a harsh line the absolutely wonderful thing about these is that they are reactivated with water so even down here if i'm like okay i don't like the way that this line looks i dipped my brush in the water i'm gonna wipe off the excess the brush is just regular like moist it has moisture such a nasty word and i'm just gonna blend it out so it's not so much of a harsh line. Watercolor is reactivated by water. So it's not final. It's not like acrylic. Acrylic, you slap it on there and it's done. It is done. You got to paint over it or blend it out. Watercolor is just reactivated and there it is. Let's add some green here. Ooh, actually let's do the, the high chrome. Just tiny little speckles. You don't want to completely like glob it on. Just if you want to even just do little dots, that's cool. If you want to do little strokes, that's cool. Maybe some up here. We're not gonna overdo it, but then we are. Let's add some pink down here. Actually, I'm gonna do some of this purple that I activated. This is also from the Sherbet Kisses. Just some tiny little strokes here. You don't want to completely take away the detail that you did. Oh, and right here. Hello, duh. Okay. Next, <laughs> because I'm not done. Here I am, two and a half hours later. I'm sorry for keeping you guys so long. I want to add some gold to it. Can we do that? Can we collectively as a unit decide that this needs some gold to it? Because I can tell you that it does. I'm going to use some shimmer shots. The uh, metallic set. This is the gold. Again, this is not a promo. This is just genuinely the products that I use on every rock that I paint. I cannot think of a time when I don't use Wanda products. If I'm not using shimmer on it and I just want it to be a matte painting, I'm still somehow using neons in there with my acrylic paint. Somehow. Shimmer shots. Oh my God, I should have explained that. How people, some people don't know how, sh how shimmer shots work. I've been seeing this question a lot lately. This is just like regular paint, guys. It's just like regular paint. It's just in a little cute tin. It's just, it's like water, uh, watercolor. It can be reactivated. Actually, hold on. Let me show you. Again, this is not a promo. I am just showing you guys how to use the products that most of you guys already have, number one. And number two, the products that I use. So this is actually already dry, right? This is shimmer shots that I put on the top of my um wet palette and guess what 
if you add some water to it, this is shimmer shot. This is not watercolor like in the pan, but it acts just like watercolor. You can reactivate it with water. Just add water and ta-da, there it is. You're ready to use it again. Isn't that awesome? You don't ever have to waste paint because you can reuse it. Just like that. See, completely dry. And just add a little bit, oh, it has some of the copper still. Just add a little bit of water and reactivate it. And there you go. Ta-da. Oh, you can't really see it. Anyway, I put a little bit of my shimmer shot here. All you have to do is just dip it out, put a little drop, a little bit goes a very, very long way, and use it like paint. See how it's very liquid, it's very fluid. Um, I don't know what I wanna do, I kinda wanna do like a little bit of a, let's do that. Do some cute little bohemian designs. Um, maybe let's expand this out like this. And if I completely ruin the rock right now, that's totally cool. It's not. It's not um, that big of a deal. Just have fun with it. Experiment. Make it your own. If you want to add some flowers. Go ahead and add some flowers. If you want to add some swirlies, add some swirlies. Just make it kind of stand out, you know? your pens, your paint pens, um, your fine liners. I don't know, just have fun with it. Add some flowers, add some swirlies. Maybe another swirly here, that's too much. That's too much. That's fine, just like that. Hummingbirds are very glittery, Deborah. Oh, yeah, Bruno is drinking. He is a very loud drinker. <laughs> Bruno, bro, what are you doing? And Luna. We got Bruno and Luna. What is this? Did you drag in something from out outside, miss ma'am? What are you doing? You guys, have you guys met Luna? I don't know if you guys have, but she is uh, our new... I need little baby. I need little baby. I'm my Luna, my little Luna, my little Luna. And Bruno. Yes, Bruno, we can't forget you. I know. Hi. Hi, Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hi, Bruno. <laughs> anyway, those are my dogs. And my feet. Don't look at my toes. Oh, my God. Has my camera been like this the whole time? It's, like, nasty. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Luna's our newest little rescue. She's got, like, a missing toe. She's super cute. Anyway, here is our hummingbird. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to keep the gold. Maybe tomorrow I'll wake up and be like, ah, I don't like it, and then just kind of erase it. I don't know. Maybe I'll add some white. But I am going to let you guys go now because it is 9 o'clock, and I know that you guys have been hegging on for dear life as I blabber on. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Um, if you guys are watching the replay, definitely um, come paint with me next time. It, it'll be fun. Oh, if you guys, uh, um, if you guys are interested in doing the rooms event, like I had talked about earlier, um, I might make a post about it tomorrow and uh, have like a sign up sheet because I, I, it's something I really want to try to do. It's something different. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, I want to rewatch it, you know. Um, too bad. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just really want that interaction um, to be able to help you guys with it. So I'll probably put up a post about it tomorrow in Shelly's group. 
Um, yeah, that's it. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for the conversation and for your time and your company. And I will see you guys soon. I will show you guys this beauty tomorrow when I decide to whether to keep the gold or not. I might just keep the gold, whatever. And then, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than thank you. And I hope you guys had fun. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you.